All right, your witness. Thank you. First of all, tell the, your name to the jury. Uh, Mike Marks, M-A-R-K-S. And you hold a rank within the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, do you not? Yes. And what rank is that? The rank of uh, sergeant. Okay. And what are some of your duties as a sergeant? Yeah, I'm assigned a group of guys, and I'm responsible for their supervision, making sure their police reports are done on, done on time. I uh, monitor the quality of their work. Um, yeah, I just make sure that they adhere by uh, department policies, and um, I'm there if they need any advice. Is there a specific unit that you're assigned to? I'm assigned to, uh, assigned to the uh, downtown bicycle unit. Some of the officers that are under your command then would have been uh, Bridget Fournay. Yes. Uh, Ian Chapo. Yes. Uh, Jacob Stein. Yes, sir. Okay. You got a call on February the 18th, 2023 to uh, respond to an accident scene. Is that correct? I did. Okay. And about what time did you get that call? Do you remember? I did not. Okay. Do you recall, uh, you don't as a sergeant typically wear a uh, body camera, is that correct? Uh, we are assigned body cameras, yes, sir. And do you remember if you had one on that night? I, I actually think mine was at the office being charged. Okay. But you were there on the scene that night? I was, sir. It was a pretty chaotic scene? Yes. yes. Pretty chaotic scene, correct? I thought so. And you were trying to coordinate uh, the efforts of all the officers and uh, doing their jobs, right? That is correct. Did you, at some point in time, give Bridget Fournay uh, a job to do that night? I, I, yeah, I'm sure I did. Do you yes, remember sir. if you told her to uh, to interview the, the driver of the Audi? I don't specifically remember giving her that direction, but I could have. Okay. Yes, um, and, again, when interviews are done and officers uh, come back and they communicate different information to you, is that correct? That's correct. All right. And it, at some point in time, uh, you conferred with Jacob Stein about the potential arrest of Mr. Riley, right? I did. Okay, and that's Mr. Riley right here, correct? Is yes, sir. Is that the best you can tell? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, when you were talking to uh, Mr. Uh, St uh, Jacob Stein about arresting Mr. Riley, did you discuss whether or not he was impaired? I believe I might have asked Stein or he might have volunteered that information to me. And, and you concurred that you didn't believe, based upon your experience with him, that he was impaired or intoxicated, inebriated? And that was, in my, my opinion, he did not uh, appear to be impaired in any manner. Okay. And you had spent some time with him, not uh, just right there, but, you know, while he was being arrested and so forth, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Now, uh, with regard to your contact with him, did you notice anything unusual about the way that he smelled? No, sir. So you didn't smell, and I'm sure you're familiar with it. You're familiar with the smell of pot? Yes, sir. And did he smell like pot that night? He did not. All right. Um, at some point in time, you came in contact with Mr. Riley's mother, right? I did. And you explained to her that people were telling you that he was doing like 60, 70 miles an hour. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you that's what you explained to her, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And... Uh, I think she spent a good deal of time trying to find her son in various police vehicles and so forth and talking to him there as far as you know. Uh, I mean, he was placed in the back of a cruiser. Uh, okay. So you might not have been present when he was trying to talk to his mother is what you're saying. Correct. All right. Now, there was a, a call that uh, may have come in from McCann and various people there at the scene. Were you guys looking for Janae Edmondson's mother's Maryland phone, cell phone as best you can recall? You mentioned that to me in the hallway, and I vaguely remember trying to locate a cell phone on the scene. And that was a, a, a cell phone that would have been right there at the scene where they were performing CP, uh, the uh, emergency medical attention, correct? Yes, possibly. The portion of the scene that we're talking about was the portion of the scene that you were looking in was that, that scene where they had been performing the medical attention on uh, Janae, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Thirty-seven years. Thirty-seven 
motor vehicle collisions involving fatalities or serious injuries? I have. Could you ballpark for the jury approximately how many of those? Hundreds. And when you got to this scene, um, you saw Janae, right? Uh, to be honest with you, I did not. Okay. Did you see a group surrounding where Janae was? I did. I saw that the uh, fire department was on the scene, and it appeared that they were uh, attending to someone that was seriously injured. Um, and what was your reaction upon getting to the scene and seeing, and seeing what was going on? I arrived on the scene with uh, Officer Stein and Officer Forney, and um, I purposely didn't go over to where the activity was because I just felt there was something serious going on, and I knew that they, she, the person injured, was getting the treatment they needed. And uh, I walked the other way to find witnesses because I didn't want to see that and have that, you know, part of my memories. Um, and that's even with 37, 30, more than 30 years on the force, right? Yes, sir. Um, did you observe the defendant's demeanor at the scene? I did. And what was his demeanor like? The one word that I refer to is sort of nonchalant. Okay. Um, now, it was actually, it was Fernie who did the interview uh, with the defendant, right? If Officer Forney and Jacob Stein might have talked to him. Okay. If Officer Forney testified that um, the defendant smelled like pot, would you disagree with object, him? Your Honor, also, please comment on the testimony. Sustain, rephrase the question. Um, were you in as close proximity to the defendant as Officer Forney was that evening? I would say there were certain times where I was as close as she she was. Maybe not at the same time, I guess. Okay. And Sergeant Marks, I just want to make clear for the jury, though, um, you responded to the initial scene, but uh, you weren't part of the accident reconstruction unit that came to a conclusion about what the cause of the collision was, right? That is correct. You didn't use a Leica scanner to scan the scene, right? No, sir. You weren't the person who downloaded the airbag control modules, right? No, sir. You didn't take the blood sample from the defendant, right? That is correct. You didn't go to Jeff City. You weren't the person in the crime lab who tested the Your blood, Honor, right? Your Honor, this is, you know, the point taken. You didn't do a lot of things, so I think this is improper. It's not improper. You may continue. You weren't the toxicologist who tested the blood, right? That is correct. And you didn't witness the crash, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. Thank you, Sergeant Marks. I appreciate it. In a redirect? A couple questions. In your contact with him, you never found him to be impaired or inebriated, correct? That's correct. And uh, with regard to this, you prepared a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago at the circuit attorney's office going through some videos with reports and so forth, right? I never once watched the video. We had about a 15 minute conversation, but at no time during that conversation was I showed anybody camera footage. I don't have any. Ms. Witherspoon, excuse me. Sir. Thanks, Sergeant Marks. You're free to go.